So talk to us about how you arrived at this figure. Okay, so yes, yeah, so after declining for 18 consecutive months, uh, we at FDC were projecting that that the last decline we saw in July was the last one for 2018. So we're projecting that from August, the numbers are going to be released on Friday. Mm -hmm. The numbers we're expecting on Friday, we're projecting that it would inch up marginally to 11.15%. So how we come about these figures, we go on a market survey. So we ask um, traders about what commodity prices are saying and how much difference it is from the last, we compare it to how much difference it is from the last time. So we, um, because we're approaching the harvest season, mm -hmm. so in time some commodities are already in fact ha have started their harvest period so some commodity prices we saw pri um, commodities such as tomatoes yam and rice and we saw them decline okay. and so those that fed into our month-on-month -month projection which we're projecting to decline to about 0.94 percent and annualize about 12 percent but for headline inflation which is comparing 2017 this time 2017 versus now in 2018 we are projecting that we inch up marginally and that's because the basic effects which was driving inflation down is starting to wane so what we are saying is in effect is the economic conditions as at this time 2017 and now they are at least almost the same compared to when you, inflation was really high at the start of 2017. So that is expected to feed into headline inflation and that is how we came about. Lemon okay, now there have also been forecasts that, um, you know, as we move closer into the thick of the uh, election cycle, we're mm -hmm. expecting inflation to inch up. Almost all the analysts that I've spoken to on inflation have said they expect that to start. Some say it will start in August or mm -hmm. it could start in uh, uh, August, September or October, but sometime before the end of the year. Mm -hmm. And we know that the CBN is also very concerned about that. But what I've also noticed is that for the increase, many of the projections or focus I've seen have actually been marginal, mm. not, nothing too drastic. Yes, yes, it's been marginal. But as we as it starts to increase, like, OK, so we increased to 11.15 okay. in August, it could go to as high as maybe 11.5% by the end of mm. 2018, so December. And that is. It's more, sometimes it's more than just the numbers, it's the effect on the average consumer, it's what commodity prices will be saying. And as we approach right now, okay, we're in the harvest season, so prices that might taper down the effect of commodity price increase. But as we approach the festive season, so there's increased demand, there's boosting okay. demand as we approach the festive season. So that would also feed into commodity prices. So it's about the impact on the average consumer. Okay. Now, um, another inflationary threat that we talk, we've talked about in the last couple of months, and I think as FTC also mentioned, it was a, a possible wage increase, uh, mm. the minimum wage. And we haven't exactly heard conversations between the federal government and the, the labor unions about how this is going to. So perhaps you, do you, are you taking that off the table in terms of inflationary headwind? Um, so for right now, yes, it was one of our major considerations at the start of the year because we were hearing things like, oh, you'll be ready by December, mm. by September, okay. the committee will be done with their meetings but as of right now it's we've they've really gone silent on it so we don't know that it will still be possible by the end of this year i'm not sure about that but it, again these things are about timing sometimes so with the mm -hmm. political season it might be a, a an impetus for them to mm -hmm. come out Bring with something exactly let's yes. talk about the mpc meeting that's just two weeks away mm -hmm. and on the agenda the number at this considering uh, the last uh, MPC meetings, inflation always takes center stage, and the CBN is going to be looking at uh, inflation trends uh, from the, its last meeting, and of course, it's been, uh, an, it's been a decline mm. a trend. So how do you see the, what kind of comments are you expecting the MPC members to make concerning inflation? And I know that the CBN at the last communique also mentioned the fact that they're quite concerned about inflationary pressure, talked about, of course, elec election spending. They also mentioned uh, the possibility of you know, wage growth mm -hmm. and, and all of that. So do you think that they might taper down in terms of comments, in terms of the intensity of okay. that concern? So yes, at the, last at the last MPC meeting, inflation was basically the subject of their discussion. So, and if our projections are right and inflation actually increases, even though marginal to 11.15%, it would, I think it would still be a front burner issue because it's, they need to think about these things and there's also the fact of um, the weak gdp growth mm -hmm. there's um capital there's external imbalance there's um capital flights and at the same time the mpc is meeting the u.s fed will be holding their meeting around the same time so and if our projections are right and there's an interest rate hike again from their side it would they would need to think about these things and so i think that inflation will still be a front burner issue because 
they need to think about what these things will mean for the average consumer. But do you think that at this point, uh, they could make another some kind of move to also mitigate that? Because I'm thinking, what else can they do at this point other than to just leave the headline rates okay. where it is right now? Okay, so as it has always been, they have three options to look at. They have this to maintain status quo, and that might be, they might lean more to that because any decision, any move they make right now might be termed to be politically motivated, mm. even if it's for the good of the economy. If, to the average Nigerian, it might just be, it's a political motivation. And they also have the option of an interest rate cut if they want to boost, um, boost GDP growth, they want to boost credit to the private mm -hmm. sector, even though from their last meeting they came out with these new initiatives to boost the credit. Yeah, with the CRO, yeah. Exactly, so it might take a while, but it might still take a while before we start to feel the impact, the private sector starts to feel the impact of that, of those initiatives. And they also have the option of interest rate hike, which they might want to do to curb inflationary pressures and to, you know, maybe curb external imbalance pre and pressures and everything. But I, again, it's about the timing of this thing. So to a large extent, I still believe that they will maintain status school because they might just want to play it safe now other indicators that they may <coughs> they may take a look at uh, <coughs> excuse me that they may take a look at that also includes the naira mm -hmm. and the forex reserves mm -hmm. we've seen a slight drop in fx reserves do you think that that is that's something they're also going to mention as a major concern for them we've seen that pressure at the INU window but fortunately for the authorities mm -hmm. all prices are still high as a matter of fact 79 dollars this morning so it looks like they may be okay well, yes, yeah, so at the last meeting, it felt like external reserves was not really touched on a lot. But right now, it's something that the average Nigerian should know that external reserves has been falling. And that is because um, investors are getting really jittery about the whole political uncertainty. So they are taking this capital flight. And if US Fed raises rates again at their next meeting, it would even be all the more worse. There will be increased capital flight. So investors are. Uh, it's about the confidence in your environment, okay. uh, the confidence of the economy you want to invest in. So they are really taking out their money. And yes, oil prices are stable at about uh, over $70 per barrel. But external reserves is a combination of FPI flows That's and um, oil proceeds and all those kind of revenue generating things. And But I feel that F FPI flows, the outflow is, effect is affecting external reserves more than the inflow of oil proceeds. Okay. So that's my... That might, yeah. Right,